What's good, everybody? It's boy Chuck Diesel here with another episode of Sake Sundays. I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Sake High, for supplying us with the sake. And also, a thank you to God's favorite jewels for, you know, the bracelet I got on. This little charm right here is my tiger's eye. And then we have a piece of amethyst for our guests. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Your You're welcome. Purple matches. <laughs> Purple is my favorite color too. Wow, it's one of my favorite colors. That's good. Thank you. Oh, for sure. Oh, introduce yourself to the people. Hi, my name is Denny Doll. I'm a model, singer, actress, overall artist, and I'm just happy to be here today. Well, thank you for coming through. Yeah, thank you oh. for having me. What did you start off doing, like, first, modeling, singing, or acting? So, I used to sing growing up, but uh, recently in my career, I started off with modeling first. Um, and so then I started last year with modeling and then later in the year I started writing music mm -hmm. and so then I started performing in November. All right. What made you want to start writing music? Just, I have a lot to get out. And so pretty much, um, I went through like a lot of love drama. So I made a few songs. Um, it's called the love note. Mm -hmm. So that's the EP that, um, is being finalized now. How many songs are on it? Just three. Yeah, just three. Just my little intro. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like, I, I feel like it's my time to be creative, but just my life is just what's led me to like write and pour out and just express my feelings, but just make it in an art form. How'd you get started writing? Um, uh, pretty much it's just my feelings. And then I find a beat that I like that really resonates and I just put them together. But what like made you say, I'm gonna write a song. Or I'm going to write this. Oh. My feelings are the song. Well, just growing up, I always wanted to be like a singer. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be um, on stage, modeling, singing, dancing, um, all of that. So it's just, I feel like the time is now for me to pursue my dream that I always wanted to do. So, yeah. What made you realize the time was now? God, just I feel it. You know, like I just feel in. Everything is in his divine timing. So I just knew it was my time. Like I just felt this yearning, this fire, this burn to like go after my dreams. Because for the past, I would say four or five years, um, pretty much all of my twenties so far, I've been in school. Yeah. Um, and I've been working like nine to fives, part time jobs yeah. um, that are like career based. But it wasn't like creatively based. Yeah. And so it's like, well, you know, I feel like if I'm going to chase my dream now, the time's going to be now. So. All right. What are you going to school for? Um, I went to school for education and sociology. All right. You're going to study people? Yeah. People. And then I work with children. So um, I'm good with like counseling and therapy. But then also I'm good with working with kids and with babies and with adolescents. So just people pretty much in the educational system. And then outside of the educational system. Oh. Mm -hmm. You said your EP, you said Letters of Love? Oh, the love note. The love note? Yeah. All right, yeah. so is the whole thing centered around love? Yeah, pretty much the first one. It's kind of like my intro song, and it's not about, like, relationship-based, but it's just kind of like a love note to myself, yeah. like, a reminder, like, who I am. Mm -hmm. And then the other two um, are more about love like relationships so the second one is kind of like what i want for the future and then the last one is kind of just like it's named why so it's kind of just a like freestyle me saying like why you know so it's just different aspects of love i would say so one is about me second is about like what i want a relationship what love to look like in the future and then the last one is like you know kind of like real you know like not sad but a little bit, kind of. Just telling the truth. Yeah, telling yeah, the truth. Without making it pretty. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, a little note. note. <laughs> hey, I was talking with somebody the other day about just music yeah. and uh, the idea that love isn't written about the same way and that we need more music with love in it. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I feel like love is really... Um, an important topic and I, I do think that we should talk about love more mm -hmm. is love is I would say it makes good music yeah. because love when it's right it's positive it's pretty it's 
I don't know. It just makes sense going with music. Um, and then when love is not so pretty, it, I guess it still does make good with music because it's like you're telling a story. It no, is yeah. interesting. So. No, yeah. I was saying, I think it's just because it's really relatable. Yeah. It's like everyone has experienced love in some capacity. Yeah. So it's like, I could make a song about my outfit, but if you don't really like clothes, you don't you care. You don't care. Yeah. yeah. I could make a song about going to the club. Yeah. But if you don't like going to the club, it's, it's just, not for you. Right. But if I make a song about a pure love, it don't matter if I'm talking about my grandma, talking about a relationship with the woman or talking about like realizing what love meant to be. Mm hmm. Somebody else could relate to it. Everybody can relate. Yeah, to it. it's a universal yeah. topic. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Oh, how many songs have you gotten under your belt in the last year? Three. Three? Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's coming out soon. Um, I shot the video for two of them. So I'm looking to shoot the last video for the last song this week. All right. Oh, here. Shot to, shot to work it. Thank you. Um, tell me what you think. It's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. It's real subtle. Yeah. Real sweet. Smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Smooth it's for smooth. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could drink too much of it by accident. Uh oh. Like, yeah. if it wasn't in these, you know, it's nice very little cans. Easy. Yeah. Sip it, sip it. Like, I'm proud. <laughs> like, like, I have one, two. Like, I thought I had wine. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it tastes like wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a rice wine. Yeah. 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 No, they're straight. Oh. What's your favorite drink? This now. <laughs> All right, you heard that. Right. So, sakehigh.com. Mm -hmm. Log on. Order some to your front door. Yo. You got a little taste of Kyoto, Japan, right here in America. Now, with that, we're going to pour a cup of tea, too. I forgot it was here. It's hot. It's hot before. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to thank Buddha for the drink. What do you know about Buddha? Nothing. Buddhist. I'm not a Buddhist. Oh. No. I. All the reason I hesitate like that mm -hmm. is because some people might be like, "You sound like a Buddhist." Sometimes if I get to talking, because you well, you're like, "What you know about?" Buddhist? So I'm like, like, "Well, I don't know nothing." But do you know? I know a little bit oh. about Buddhist. Uh, it's weird. I had to do a project in like sixth grade. Mm -hmm. You know, you do team projects. Yeah. And mm -hmm. nobody do shit. Mm -hmm. I did like four sections out of six. Like, so I didn't did it write them all, but uh -huh. like. I did all the research and then I gave it to them like, all right, bro, write your three paragraphs, bro. I answered all the questions, just put it into a paragraph. Right. So I was like, right. yeah, I learned all that. And then once I got older, I started to actually think about what I was reading when I was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. and, you yeah, yeah. 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 But as I got an order, I was like, look back at it, you know, remember like Buddha was a prince before he was Buddha. And the term Buddha isn't his name. You feel me? That's a title. There were Buddhas, the Buddhas. You know what oh. I mean? This is, we look at the Buddha we have now as like the main one, like the prominent one. Like some people will say Jesus Christ was a prophet, but he wasn't the savior. There are many prophets. And then Christianity looks at Jesus as the prophet. There are many Buddhas, but Buddhism looks at this Buddha and like as a symbol. But if you actually study it, he was a monk pretty much. Mm -hmm. But pretty much Buddha was a prince who went outside the palace and saw a lot of fuck shit. He had never seen pain or suffering. And so he was hella confused. Like, why are they poor? Why are they starving? Why are they crying? My life is great. Mm -hmm. What's with the polarity and the opposites? Mm -hmm. And then even people who live like I live complain and are sad. And so he set out to figure out why. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that's what led him to enlightenment because he just became a monk. He stopped eating. He would do a bunch of different fasts, cleanses. There was a point in time where all he ate was the juice out of beans. Like, that was his fast. He would only eat, like they say, you could see his spine through his stomach, and he would meditate for hours on end. And so one day he went and sat under a tree for 40 days, and afterward he became enlightened. And he had, had already been on his journey of finding enlightenment for years. Like, after he left the palace on that trip, mm -hmm. he left the palace. He never went back. And he just started traveling the world, like, seeking knowledge and becoming a monk. All different types of monks. And it's similar to Jesus because Jesus went into the woods for 40 days and 40 nights and prayed. And that's when he was tempted by the devil. 
And then afterward, that's when he began his actual ministry. So it's like Buddha and Jesus kind of have a similar trajectory. I did not know that. Wow. Random stuff that I think about when I look at that. Where did you get it from? Uh, this store in Santa Monica is called Art Gallery Store. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a museum and then it has like stuff like this, ceramics and stuff on it. Okay. Um, so check it out. If you're trying to see some art, there's like 20 galleries there. Yeah. Okay. That sounds nice. Well, shout out to Art Gallery Store. I'll link okay. Buddha below. And uh, let's see. Who's your favorite artist? It would be funny to say myself, but <laughs> um, who have I been listening to late? I've been listening to an artist called TV Black. He's new and upcoming, but I like his music. How'd you find him? Um, so my friend, so my friend put me on to him. All right, but mm -hmm. what happened about it? It's like it's rap, kind of rock, a little okay. bit, a little but alternative. Like, not alternative, but I would say you know, like Ken Carson. Icy Twat, Coach Ice, you never heard of them? I heard of Icy Twat in yeah. the first one, Carlson. Yeah. I would listen. I'd be sleep on music for real. Kind of like Playboy Cardi kind of like right. vibes. Like. Uh, Playboy Cardi's kind of alternative. Mm -hmm. This is not like when you say rap or hip hop, you feel me? Uh -huh. You wouldn't necessarily, like, the average person wouldn't say Playboy Cardi, like mm -hmm. a 35 year old, 40 year old person. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's an alternative. Side. Yeah, that's even Lil like, Yachty is like alternative. Yeah, side. yeah, yeah, kind of like the auto tube, but kind of like rap, but kind of like well, rock, some rock to it. Yeah. yeah. So. No. Oh, you like rock shit? Mm -hmm. Are you a rocker? Yeah, at heart. Yeah. You be in the mosh pit? No, not that much. <laughs> not, 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 not that far. Not not that far. I like the electric guitar. I love the music, but like, uh, uh, yeah. I need some space. I, I like the sound. I don't like yeah. the. Oh, yeah. Uh, -uh. Have you ever been in the mosh pit? No, I don't want to. Yeah, I have. It was always by accident. By accident? How was it? Was it clone? I was trying to get out the whole time. You trying to get out? Yeah. 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 Nah, I don't know about it. I heard too much. Yeah. No. It's, I, nah, I'm like, bro, I'm short. Thanks for throwing bows, fists. Yeah. Like, Good. This is a money maker, baby. Like, right. If I get right. in your face, I'm going to be pissed. Exactly. You can't fight. Right. Like. Mm -hmm. So, nah, I just be like, <laughs> start ducking out of there. <laughs> so, I got a cousin, him and his best friend. They're just... That's wild boys. They and be living in the mosh pit? They don't live in the mosh pit, yeah. but if we're anywhere where there's any type of live shit, mm -hmm. like, yo. And they'll start to try to start me. And I'm like, bruh, chill. Like, this is a Childish Gambino concert. Like, <laughs> it's not it. Chill, it's bro. Not it. And like, oh, look, look, he's getting it. He's, all right, bet, bet, push him up. I'm like, bro, we'll be plotting. Like, all right, you see that person? What? He look like he's rocking. And that person's gone. All right, try and push them into each other. Yeah. Maybe set it up. Let me set it up. That's why I'm like, nah. As soon as the music get a little loud. Oh, no. I got to think about out. that. People be organizing mosh pits. Yeah. Oh. The real mosh pits are with the shit. Mm. Uh, do you, have you heard of Mariah Soleil? Mm-mm. Uh, it's a girl out here in uh, LA. She has a song called I'm a Pretty Girl, but I be in a mosh pit. It's called Mosh Pit. She mm -hmm. said my shit. I was like, okay. <laughs> she was my last episode. I just thought about it. So maybe you could give some tips from her on how to survive. Okay. But well, hopefully I won't have to survive in a pit because I don't want to like, go. Nah, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, what gets you inspired to make music? What music? Like, I always have my headphones on all the time. Like, all kinds of music, different types of music. Like, I'm always singing. I always humming. All the time, so it's like music is in me. Oh yeah, yeah. So I feel like I just need to get some out and make my own. Finally, like contribute to like the music world instead of just like looking at it, like being it. Oh, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Who's your biggest inspiration? Um, my biggest inspiration. Growing up, I always wanted to do like singing but then put rap in it as well but i always want to make it pretty like i didn't want to i want to make it like because i'm girly so i always imagine me being like this like singing pop princess but like a little rap and so then, like beyonce yeah and then like when Nicki minaj came out i was like oh my god Nicki minaj is only girly sometimes it's like uh -huh. she's way i don't say sometimes she's girly now 
mm-hmm. when she first started rapping, I won't say there was no girliness about it, but there was no like that soft feminine mm-hmm. edge. Mm-hmm. It was in her appearance. Yeah. When she opened her mouth, no, she was rapping with any man in two thousand eight, yeah. nine, ten, and eleven. Mm-hmm. She was rapping on the same level as any man you could pull out. Mm-hmm. That was wild. Yeah. yeah, she was. She was running. I was so excited when she came out because I'm like, who is this pretty girl? She's like, she's pink. She's a Barbie. She see and she rap. Friday. Yes, I was like so in love because like I love pink. Like growing up, I wouldn't even wear nothing but pink. That's funny. Like I was just straight pink, and I love Barbies and brats like everywhere. So that's why my name is Denny Doll because I feel like you doll. I'm a doll. And so, but like when she came out, I was like, oh my gosh, like that's me. That's funny. That's me. Like. That's crazy. So I was, I guess her, I guess you would say. No, that's dope. That's a good find. That yeah. connecting to mm-hmm. Nicki Minaj. Yeah. But honestly, even for me though, Nicki's one of my favorite rappers, like male or female. So. And not so much now, because I don't think about it. Partially, I don't listen to her music as much, mm-hmm. but that's because she started doing the Barbie. I don't say started doing, but it's like, I'm a grown man now. So it was like, being a Barb's don't really die a whole lot. <laughs> of it. It you feel me? Yeah. But like, when she first signed with Wayne, before she signed with Wayne, when her and Gucci started dropping together, mm-hmm. I was like, yo. I showed my uncle, because my uncle was from New York. Like, he used to have his own label. Like, mm-hmm. he's in music. And so, like, I was like, yeah, listen to this. He was like, what? Who the fuck is that? He was like, no, 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 no. What's her name? Minaj. That's a bad bitch right there. <laughs> what he was like? Nah, Lil Kim ain't even say that. Foxy Brown ain't even say all that. He was like, "That's different." I was like, "All right, bet." I found something. You feel me? He was like, "I was probably 14. And my uncle would be like, "Yo, nigga, listen to this." And this nigga be like, "Who is that?" I was like, "Bet." Right, Lil Jim. I was like in sixth grade, I think. Yeah, yeah, but I don't. I didn't know half of what she was talking about. I didn't know what the Minaj oh, part okay. even meant. I even know. I thought that was just the name. Yeah. That's so when he was like, Minaj, I was like, her the name? Her name is Nikki. I don't know her name. <laughs> like, that's her last name. Like, but then I got older. She was like, Nikki Minaj. Nikki Min- What is it? Uh, Nikki Nikki Lewinsky. Minaj. Nikki Lewinsky. And I was like, wait, wait. Lewinsky? No. no. I was just be rapping itty bitty pig. Not knowing oh. what she's talking about. Just knowing our whole thing. And then later on, I'm like, oh, that's what she picked? I got older. I was oh. like, oh, that's why you said, who the fuck is that? She talking like ain't none of the other female rappers ever talk. She's like, they all was bad, but it's in her name. Like, right, it's in her name. But nah, it's because she three people in my head. She'd be fucking this shit up, bro. So is that, uh, what was that? Um, motorsport? Mm-hmm. She ate everybody in the song. She had three, four flows. Crazy. Yeah, Shout out to Nikki. to her uh, latest song. Shout, no, I didn't. It's good. The album, no album? Yeah. I didn't. It's I said I'd be sleeping on it. I saw it drop. You I should guess. listen to it. I'll, I'll you give it a peep. I'll give it a peep. Mm-hmm. Like I said, she's spitting bars always. Because so. oh. me and her, we got like the same birthday month. For real? Yeah. And so she dropped it in December. And so I was playing like, she put a birthday song on there. I did my post to that song. Like <laughs> I was like, it's our birthday. Like, so it's our birthday. It's our birthday. <laughs> I'm like, happy peak birthday. Silly. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Away from the music for a second. Modeling. How'd you get into modeling? Um, so pretty much I did my first fashion show last, I would say, March or mm-hmm. April. So pretty much I just been doing different shows, working with different brands, designers. Um, yeah, actually today, um, my work is actually doing a video shoot. So I'm going to be doing like a um be part of like this Afrobeat song, being like a play passenger. So just doing different things with that. Um, while looking to be signed, uh, part of like a model collective. So pretty much like we do shoots together, bookings together, but I want to be part of like an agency as well. So I'm still like working towards that. Um, yeah. Have you reached out to agents already? Mm-hmm. Have yeah. they given you feedback? The thing is, like, I'm still learning, so I didn't do my pictures right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have to um, reach out again with my updated pictures. Yeah. So I did my updated pictures recently. So 
Já jsem ti musím. Takže špatně. Ano. What is it like? What is one of your dream modeling gigs? Whether it be runway or is it a certain it's brand? It's runway, and it's like being on the makeup commercials. Being in the well, we don't have magazines like that. No, right. We're growing I mean, up, they still have them, but no one, look, no one really. Looks if you got the centerfold in Vogue, everybody looking at it. Yeah, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But it's still it's it's, it's head, in the head because like, like when, certain ones. Yeah, growing yeah. up, I used to like buy magazines like the little like teen bopper mag- yeah. magazines. I used, used to be at the store. You, you look at you feel me you walk into the store I'll flip it through. Look at through the magazine. People's yeah. magazine like, mm-hmm. And so they still be pricking them. And they still do American Sexy Man. Like, yeah, they, they still, still do when you see it. Yeah, you it's see just, the target when you go. It's just not home. like it's not like oh like, there's a new issue. Nah. No. I, it's all Yo, you remember when you be in the stores and it's a whole aisle that's so just books and magazines? Yeah. That, I just now thought about that. Barnes it would literally Noble. be like this, just magazines. Barnes and Noble still got that. I mean, the they, book, they still got the magazines too? Yeah. yeah that's they why. got so many different magazines. I wonder how much money they list. Like just companies on printing up physical I copies. Know. I know they had to cut down. So many do like online. Yeah, online. Yeah. It's all online. But that was my dream growing up. Being like in the magazine, you flip it and see my face. Um, I just want to do like the makeup mag- not magazine, makeup ads. Um... Like the hair ads, clothes, like anything, like everything. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's been your favorite uh, modeling like gig so far. My mo- favorite modeling gig. I like the most recent gig I did was I would say last Wednesday, not last Wednesday, because I was sick last week. But the week before that, we went to Tampanga. Um, but it was really beautiful. Um, that was fun. Oh, yeah. No, like the mountains. All right. But, I'm not from here. Not from oh, here. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Ohio. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll be seeing places, but I've beautiful. never been. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, what like, is that? What's that? Oh, no. LA is so big. You got a lot to. This a lot. I'm still learning. I've been here my <laughs> whole life. I'm like, where? Yeah. Where's it? I still don't know everything. But actually, I did my video shoot, which is kind of like a photo shoot because we did pictures and videos, and I did that last Sunday. And so I guess that would be my favorite one because it was like about me. It was like my creative vision. Was that your first time doing like it was my, together for just you? Um, it was my second. So pretty much the first one I did. It was kind of like we were going to an event, and then the timing was like off because we had to hurry up because then I had to perform so I didn't really get to enjoy it how I really wanted to but the one I did on Sunday I really enjoyed that one because I was able to just like be my element be myself we shot it at the beach um I was able to just like have fun it's gonna be free and I'm like editing it now but you're doing that edit yourself yeah yeah what are you um cap cut I'm really good with like editing and art and stuff. Like I actually want to get back into drawing um, and doing like stuff with like, my hands, but um, it's been really fun. This is your first music video you edited? Mm-hmm. Good shit. Yeah. Everyone likes it so far. Oh, good. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see it too. I've been thinking about it like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, once you start working on something, once you're like in it, mm-hmm. you have to walk away. You just be like, all right, I got to finish that. Or, oh, there's that one part. Did I get that one clip? I'm going to put that clip with this part of the song. Right. I was thinking about that. I'm like, I was in church yesterday and I'm like, okay, I'm going to put like a little frame around that part of the video. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait, let me get back to where I am. Yeah, wait, let me. Yeah. Okay. But like, I'd be thinking about it like all the time. That's the mind of an artist. You just be zoning off into the crowd. All the time. Like in school, I would just be daydreaming. Just, just daydream like I'm such a daydreamer like, oh huh like oh yeah mm-hmm. the crazy thing is it's like I won't necessarily be daydreaming but I'll just be in my head but I'm paying attention to what's happening mm-hmm. so if you ask me a question I'll be like you was talking about the cat with the ball like right you like, hear I didn't it hear it yeah, you feel me yeah, you it was like they said the cat picked the ball up and ended up falling down the <laughs> I was like the cat with the ball and it fell I don't they're like what you you were listening. Yeah. And I'm right back to being in my head. I remember I was in college and like my teacher was like this. 
I was, I was uh, a performance major, so mm-hmm. somebody's up doing, you feel me, their thing, and the professor sits here watching. I'm like this, but I'm like this out the window. And I just like look over and she's staring at me. I was like, oh, what? And she was like, I'm just trying to figure out if you're with us or not. I could never tell. Oh, I was just like, bro. Right, you can never tell. Why are you worried about me? Like, teach this class. Right. Like, like, right. Yes, I'm out this window right now. But I'm here too. And I see you exactly. looking at me. Watch them. Right. <laughs> right. Don't you got a class too? I was like, why are you so worried about what I'm thinking? Right. Oh, uh, I felt like that was, I don't know. It never sat right with me. It's like, you can't even teach class because you want to know if I'm in the class with you or not. I'm here. I'm I check my work here. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm just not. <laughs> like, I'm making something else. Right. Like, over I'd rather be somewhere else right now. <laughs> like, but I'm, I hear you. No. That's a superpower, I feel like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to be able to focus that hard. Right. Oh. And just be all into one thing. Mm-hmm. For like a long time. Yeah. It's hard. Not everybody can super focus like that. I can't. You have to be able to edit a music video. But then I, I take breaks. <laughs> yeah, I have to take a break because then I feel like I'm like stagnant, like I'm stuck. Like, okay, I need to do something else and then come back to it and yeah. then like refresh my mind because I'm just staring at it. So I don't know. I don't know if that's just me, but like I just can't work on something like just straight. Like I got to just like take a break to like refresh and then different ideas come. No, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would be locked in. You'd be locked in. The first time I ever edited a video, I was in one spot for 10 hours. Yeah. I, I got up to use the bathroom like Good. twice, maybe drink some water, and then roll it. up. That's it. But literally, I did it all in the same spot on the floor. I was sitting on the floor and wow. then laying on the floor. That was it. And the only reason I know this is because like, I started, I woke up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I got the footage. And then next thing I know, it was dark outside. Yeah, so I'm bad with that. What's, that's part of the reason why, like, when I have projects and stuff and mm-hmm. people will ask me for it or, like, where is it at and everything, I'm like, bro, I promise you, when I get it to it, it'll be done. But I'm the type of person that as soon as I open it, I'm going to stare at it until it's almost done or I'm sleepy. There's no in-between. Wow. And if I don't have work, like, when I just completely freelance, uh-huh. I'll stay up until 4 o'clock in the morning doing something and wake up at 10. Go pee and go straight back to doing it until it's done. No, I do that too. Like, like this I don't know if it's the best. I think the break part is healthier. It's healthy, <laughs> it's healthier, but I do be up crazy hours. Like I, I was up to like five, yeah. working on it. Yeah, and then I woke up at ten. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you go, and even if you don't like start working. Let me look at what I was doing because my ass was half asleep. Yeah, right? no, I'd be looking at just staring just on the loop. Yeah. Just staring on the loop thinking like, okay, this looks good. This looks good. And then I'm like, let me add this in. But I'm like, okay, I'll do that later. I'm too tired to like actually. Right. So I'm not doing nothing right now. I'm watching. Right. I'm- uh, it is fun. I think it's fun. I'm telling myself, be like, all right, chill. Especially now. I'm way more lenient about it now. Mm-hmm. But it, it took me a long time because like with music, I was the same way. I actually with that I started trying to engineer myself which made me like that because it's like I was trying to write a song yeah. while also trying to record it right while also trying to mix it and I was doing all of those things oh. at the same time like while I'm writing the song I might start recording before I finish writing so now I'm trying to record it vocally right and then I write another line it was just too much and that's another reason why I said the breaks the breaks are I would have realized uh, I should probably just just, just stop because Honestly, I did all my songs too. I didn't make, really? yeah, I didn't make the beats, but because like I'm like I don't know where to start. What I did was I used GarageBand, yeah. so I uploaded the beat to GarageBand and then I just sung over it. Yeah. And so, and I would just send it out, and everyone liked it, so I just put it on SoundCloud. And so they right now I'm getting like professionally like mixed. Yeah. And, like, you sent them the stems. <laughs> the stems. No, like I um save the song. Yeah. So it's like a song, but it's not like professionally mixed. Oh, I'm like saying, you, did you send him the project, the graph oh, yeah, file, yeah. or did you export the audio and send it to him? Oh, yeah, the Sims. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I sent him the Sims, so it come out soon. But yeah, like, I'll be up all night just writing and changing my voice and doing all this creativity stuff. No, like, yeah. This one. I remember I used to uh, re-rap my songs just to do it, like. 
is I didn't have a computer to record on. Mm -hmm. Actually, I did have GarageBand. I had had GarageBand already. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, the same thing you just said, I'm going to be professional. And I started making music before I was even 16. But I didn't make music, invest in it or anything. Like, me and my cousins were rappers. Like, we had, like, laptops, Mm -hmm. a couple little trinky mics Mm -hmm. here and there. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And so I started writing songs. And I would just stay up every night and just rap them back. But like you said, change my voice. Like, what would it sound like if I did this? Right. What would it sound like if I were to do this? Right. Like, I could change that. And I'll be thinking about it throughout the day. Like, I can't wait to go back home. I I was rapping that different than I did the day before. Right. Yeah. Like, my voice sounds different. I feel Mm -hmm. like that's part of the, like craft though the journey you feel me is like you got to learn what you can even do before you know how you want to do it right yeah yeah that's true you gotta just keep going trial and error yeah uh let's see you said you act as well right yeah how long you been acting i just started i mean like i was in places i've grown up but i mean like i was in my first movie um about Two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. Shots to that. What was it? It's called Edge of Power. Can you say anything about what it was about or your role or anything? Um, so it's a small little role. And so pretty much it was about like this guy who owed like this big loss of money. And so I was one of the girls who like was talking to the dude like, no, you need to give her this money. Um, so it's like a small little role. But then I have another one coming up this week. Um, Sam excited about that. Um, yeah. What do you think you like better between the three? Between modeling, acting, and music. I like them all, really. Like when I go to these events and stuff, and I be in front of the red carpet, like I just be feeling like I'm in my element. Like I don't know, like I feel like this is where I'm meant to be. Like I just be feeling like happy. Like posing is fun. Same with photo shoots. Um, and then with music, like, I really enjoy making the music um, and then hearing it back and then doing the videos, which is pretty much me modeling because I'm modeling the videos. Um, but the performing part, I get a little nervous. So I'm still kind of like getting used to that. Like live performance or performance of the videos? Live performance. Not the videos, yeah. really, but the live performance. I'd be kidding, like, kind of scared. So I'm sometimes getting used to that. And then, um, have you tried any like tips or tricks to like help you? Just deep breaths, sir. Just deep breaths and just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Um, and then with acting, I did my first movie. So it's like, I don't have that, that much experience with it, but I did enjoy doing it. It was fun. Um, and I, they said I could act. Good. They're like, oh, you can act. I'm like, thank you. Like, I thought I could, but just to hear feedback from yeah. you, it makes me want to do it again. So, I like them all, but it's just the one I'm most used to doing, I would say. Like, live is my own. Yeah. And I do want to get into, like, art and drawing. But I've just been so busy. I was going to say, you're doing a lot. So, for all of this to be within the last year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot, and I was a real estate. Well, I'm a real estate agent too. Oh, for real? Yeah, and so I would be like at the office all the time. Yeah, and like I like making stuff. Like I like being creative. So just working like that, I'm like, hey, I can't wait to go home. How did you get into real estate? My dad. My dad made me. Like I don't know. Like I always liked houses, like creativity as far as like designing and going to the store and saying this will go good with this this will go good with that like styling pretty much yeah. i like and, to style myself yeah. but then style in the house but interior design yeah. yeah but he wanted me to like make the money behind it like being a real estate agent yeah know, so he made me get my license though i was listening how long have you been doing it i have been licensed since 2020. oh mm-hmm. that's a little man that's yeah a little man. <laughs> oh for real it's like i've been a realtor for a minute um What's your what's your biggest or your proudest sale or close um, deal in general? My biggest my well That would be the biggest, it's your proudest. And my proudest. I mean, I would say like I helped this family um sell their house. Um 
they're really good family um loves so i i mean i feel proud about that because we would i would be over there like every weekend we would have these like long conversations about life and stuff and about what they want to do in the future so it just made me feel good like actually like helping them get to that yeah um if your dad's interested in doing a podcast, tell him I like to have him on. Okay. I want to extend it to real estate agents and like entrepreneurs and business. Because mm-hmm. like, I've talked to so many artists. Yeah. That I want to do the same thing with, with other fields. Yeah. It's like everything that you do, mm-hmm. I've done to some degree. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Up until studying to get my license. I'd never. Did you want to do that? I, I I was already in the class. I was already studying. Yeah. Okay. And I worked at a real estate office, but it was like under the table and I was more so just like shadowing. Yeah. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, but the point of me saying all of this is people ask so many questions and are curious about doing these things. Yeah. So it's like, I want to be able to Help talk to them. all different yeah. backgrounds of, you know, yeah. people, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. creators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally, because, like, um, I always encourage people to, like, try, get in, yeah, to try and to get into real estate, because I'm not a math person yeah. at all, like, at all. Like, I'm strictly, like, reading and comprehending words, not numbers, but I'm like, I can do this. If I just, like, apply myself and just really try to pass this test, I can do it. Yeah. And eventually, like, with the right people, um... You just be underneath, you'll make a sale. Um, and so I always encourage people to like, if you do, um, if you are, if you are interested in real estate, try to get your license so you can do both. So you can do like the wholesaling, you can do the um, investment, you can do the residential. There's so many different aspects, yeah. aspects in real estate. So, and with that, it's like you always have something to fall back on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, to finish the class, is it expired? I was never... It's online? Yeah. Okay. What? You did one class or... It was like you pay for mm-hmm. the whole course. Was that like real estate trainers? I don't think There's that's what it there. was, but they're no. all fairly similar. They're, yeah. Because yeah. uh-huh. me and my roommate were talking about it, and mm-hmm. he was looking at a similar one. Than I had. And then the... um. Realtor that I was like shadowing mm-hmm. gave me a site and we both looked at it. And then someone mm-hmm. else who was in her office, she did all her paperwork yeah. and wanted to actually get licensed. Mm-hmm. So she went and took the test. Yeah, the class that I have been taking. Yeah. And went and got her license. So, yeah, the test is hard. It took me a couple tries. True. Really? I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'd be daydreaming. See, I'm a daydreamer. I daydream. So we just talked about that. And then I'm like, oh, shoot the time. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. And it just, it, even when I'm studying, I'm daydreaming. And so see, when I'm focused, I just be trying to get through that shit. Yeah, I be trying, and then like my mind just, I might be falling asleep or something. So it took me a minute. Mm-hmm. But if you got that like laser focus, you can do it. I'm not It'll worried about it. I just need to sit down and go through the material. That's what it is, is making the time to go through the material. Mm-hmm. It's like, I had started to. And I've been, I was disciplined to where I was like, all right, mm-hmm. I made a schedule. You feel me? Where it was like, I got up at a certain time and, and yeah, I had yeah. things in my box. Like, all right, from this time to this time, I'm this, from this time mm-hmm. to this time, I'm this. And I was doing that for mm-hmm. like three months. And then I just slowly just started being more relaxed in my time oh, okay. to the point where it went from, all right, I'm not going to do these one things on the schedule mm-hmm. to scheduling less. To not even keeping a schedule. Yeah. How yeah. long ago was that? 2021 is when I was like, the class expired. Yeah. And my schedule is on and off, like yeah. every other week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you remember anything from it? If I looked at the material, probably. Uh-huh. But I just go off the top of my head. I don't know. Yeah. I have a pretty good memory. So I was like, if I read it and understand it, it's mm-hmm. cool. But I didn't go past chapter like five. It was like 12 chapters. I'm in no shape to start taking the test yet. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even read the material. So I was like, I know I don't know it because I didn't even read it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not worried about passing it. I just need to make time to read it. Because mm-hmm. I, I have my um, life insurance license. Oh. It took me one try, I think, to pass the test. I studied for months. I took the practice test and passed it like three times. Oh, I think you was ready. But by the time I took it, I passed it my first time. So... 
It's like once I sit down and do it, no problem. Yeah. I just gotta make the time to do it. So at least you know you can do it. Yeah, and that's part of probably the reason why I haven't finished it. Because you're just like, I just it's get like, to it. I know I'm not gonna sit down and do it this week. Like you feel me? And like I said, I'm the type of person who lasers in. So like with the life insurance stuff, mm -hmm. I went through all the information as quick as I could. I wasn't trying to pass it as quick as I could, but I wanted to get it to in get, me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it took me probably like a month to go through everything. If that, you feel me? It probably took me like three weeks for real. Because every day I would come home after work and, just... and I would sit there for two hours at least, sometimes four. That's so hard. And I would just go through slides. So once I sit down, you got I'm not getting up. You would like, like, yeah. I'm not. Mm -hmm. It's like I engineer. I learned how to engineer. In about six months, six to eight months, self-taught YouTube videos. And was my were my mixes it? No. But I was sending them off. And I'll say this. A label with a cosign from Universal offered me a distribution deal for five songs. The first song he ever heard was the first single I ever mixed and released. What? And the number five song was a song that I, took me six months to mix, but was probably to this day still one of my proudest mixes. And I'd only been doing it for eight months, but I was sitting down every day for four yeah. to six hours yeah. and just said, what is the EQ? What is the compression? What does that mean? What is, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And I took notes. I literally would take notes yeah. on three different videos explaining the same thing. And then I would sit there and look at the notes and do it. And then I would also do it while watching the video. You study it. If I want to learn it, yeah. oh, if you're how to break it down into sizable pieces for mm -hmm. me to understand. And once I understand it, even if I don't care, once I understand it, the concept is in my head. So I just got to sit down and do it. Wow. Yeah. It's weird. If I understand something, I don't forget it. Well, you probably just pick me to say right back up. You see how I just told you about Buddha? I was you in sixth exactly grade. Sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care. I just understood it. Bye. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's why I want to do this too. It's like different mm -hmm. things to talk about. Yeah. Like foster conversation between people. Mm -hmm. And just like connectivity. Because like, I'll just be talking and I'll remember something. I'll be like, yeah, right. so you talk about real estate. Right. Uh -huh. like connectivity. If everything's connected. You feel me? We're all connected. Like the whole world is connected. And it's just we don't think about it. And so it's like there's many different ways to get to the through line. Like even with this, you say it tastes like wine. It is wine, but it's wine from rice. But it's from Japan. Japanese wine. You feel me? Oh, I connected. Didn't, I didn't know it was wine. It was connected. Oh. oh. You did though. You tasted it. You feel me? You didn't know, but you knew. Oh. You feel me? You didn't know, but you knew. Yeah, I know it tastes like yeah. it, but... no, I feel like that about a lot of stuff is like we don't necessarily know, mm -hmm. but innately we know. Yeah. You feel me? And neither we know that's correct. Check that. Mm -hmm. Being more like Buddha and listening. <laughs> As opposed to trying to do. And you realize more that you know. You consider yourself <laughs> a good listener? I do. Do you consider yourself? Yeah. It's good to listen. No, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think I listen first. Um, and then I take a step to like analyze and then to think before I even like respond. Most people don't. I don't even always. Most of the time, I'll say, I don't take a second before I respond to think about what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. I'll listen, and then I'll let my response come. You just let it flow. Mm -hmm. But usually, it's because I trust myself. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I, if it's a conversation, like, right now, you can see when I am thinking about what I'm saying before I say it. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to tell, because you feel me? You don't have that. This is our first like sit down conversation, yeah. but you can see I'm now I'm thinking about it, mm -hmm. and so I feel the like thinking happening mm -hmm. and the look on my eyes and in my forehead. That's why I'm thinking about it. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's a cool thing to do, and it's something that people I feel like all of us will respond differently to situations in general. If you did think about it for three seconds before you said something, mm -hmm. and sometimes you would say the first thing that comes out, you're like, "What the fuck?" They'd be like, "What you mean?" But like, um, you gotta stand on that. <laughs> you, it's too late. Oh, you like, I don't want to do that. You said, "Then why are we even here?" You're right. We here because you 
was like, oh, wow. You feel I changed me? my mind. It's like, I was doing it because you wanted to do it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You know, what if you stop the thought about it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or just even when it comes to like getting mad. I stopped the thing. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, I don't know what I would say. But I'm sure before I say something, that's going to escalate it 10 times worse. Oh, but yeah. I'd be like, just... I'm not. If I really get mad, you probably won't like me later. <laughs> that's what I think. I'm like, mm-hmm. you're not going to like me if I'm talking. Yeah, so like, let me just have talk. Let, let me let me just take the high road. Let me let me just. I could say something. I could mm-hmm. say a lot. That's a lot. Of You're not gonna like none of them. <laughs> so I might as well just keep it to myself. Right. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Let, let me just. It's not even I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want to have to deal with the conversation after your feelings is hurt. I don't want to deal with none of it. I don't I care. Time. I don't even want to feel bad. I'm like, yeah, that's I what it is. So I'm, I'm sad. Nothing. I'm going to feel say. bad. I feel like I'm funny. <laughs> I feel like you're going to cry. Let me just shut up because well, I'm going to feel bad later. It's like, I'm going to feel bad that I made you feel bad knowingly. Mm-hmm. I knew what I was going to say and I didn't want to say it. I tried not to. But I said it. And I feel bad that you had to receive it, but you wanted it. You can't, you can't push uh, it. I was quiet. Oh, I was quiet. Mm-hmm. Once I got quiet. I walked away. It's because I, still I didn't want to do it. Well. It's funny when it's like, but you, you never said that. It's like, I know I didn't. <laughs> I didn't because I was trying to spare you. Right. <laughs> I'm really nice person. I'm very so nice. I'm trying to be more like Buddha. <laughs> But I'm not there yet. I'll just turn it like Jesus. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, turn the other cheek. Yo, you know that with the turn the other cheek passage? He wasn't necessarily saying to get slapped again. And where? The Bible. Wait, you said he it, didn't mean? Yeah, like by the turn the other cheek, he mm-hmm. didn't mean for you to get slapped and then turn the other cheek and get slapped again. Oh, no, he meant like walk away. No. Well, what you mean? So, a lot of the stuff in the Bible, we have to think of in the context for the time. Where, like, if it was 1970 mm-hmm. and I ran in the bar and said, it's lit. What? Where's the fire? 1970, right? <laughs> context. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Well, if I'm running a bar right now, I'm like, it's lit. Everybody gonna look at me like, who's this lit nigga coming? You feel me? Really? Like, why are you lit? So it's the context. So in that time period, there were slaves, there were masters, and there were still the hierarchies in class, right? If you slap somebody with a certain hand, it's because of the class they were in. If I was going to be a higher up level of uh, if I was a higher up level of society, mm-hmm. I wouldn't slap a slave with a certain hand. You feel me? The same way in um, certain cultures, and even in America, they say grown men should never greet men with the left hand. Mm -hmm. It's a sign of disrespect. You feel me? Well, the same. If I got into a quarrel with somebody who was on equal ground as me, and I slapped him with my left hand, I was calling him a peasant. And so he was saying... Uh If you want to raise your hand at me, I'm going to turn my cheek and you got to slap me on equal footing. You're not going to slap me like I'm less than you. I'm not a peasant. If we're going to quarrel, we're going to quarrel on equal ground because we are one in the same. Mm-hmm. Not I'm going to slap, get slapped again and get slapped again. Is all right, you want to slap me? I'm going to turn my cheek and tell you to slap me as an equal. So then I'm going to slap your ass back as an equal. Oh. Right. I never heard of it. Context. Don't remember. But it's just somewhere. It's floating around in the brain. Oh. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I learned, like, you know, you're supposed to be peaceful. You're supposed right. to give mercy chances. Right. But until, you know, you got to let somebody know. Right. Then that's in the Bible. Right. You know, you can't just be no pushover. And that's what he was saying mm-hmm. then, too, in that statement. Where he was like, he didn't say to strike first. But if you want to strike me. Wow. That's always been my thing. I'm going to turn the other cheek and tell you to do it again. Because mm-hmm. if you do it as an equal, I have the ground to now react. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's my thing. It's like I never started, but I ended. 
Yeah, like, I'll never start nothing, but I will end it. So, yeah. Take them to the pit. Mm hmm. <laughs> Silly. But yeah, no. I didn't even get there. Like you said, everything's Oh, I said, Ty, be like Buddha. He said, be like Jesus. Oh. And, oh, it don't matter. It don't matter. But yeah. I was, now I gotta look that up and see, right. it's been a minute since I've seen it, but I've seen it twice, which is why it stuck actually. And I was like, interesting. And I was just like, all right, what's the context behind this stuff? Mm -hmm. And like, because uh, there's another one, you know, it says, um, like, is it Leviticus? I think is a, a book of rules. One of the books of the Bible is a long list of rules where it's like it talks about wearing mixed linen. It's like you shouldn't wear mixed linen. That's in the Old Testament. Old Testament. Yeah. It's Old Testament. Yeah. yeah. But uh, even that has scientific basis behind it. Mm. Whereas, like, if you take 100% pure cotton and put it on human skin, just the uh, magnetic charge of yeah. your frequency mm -hmm. is positive in 100% cotton. And then other materials, everything has a negative and a positive charge, right? Mm -hmm. And so certain materials, if it's a negative, will take down your charge, right? And so cotton is positive. So if you wear 100% cotton, you just be feeling like, oh, you're, you're just like a neutral, yeah. positive, you feel me? But then if you take cotton and you mix it with like an elastic or something, it now has a different type of charge, mm -hmm. which equals a negative charge to the human electromagnetic field once you put it on. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was telling you not to wear certain clothes so you could have optimal energetic, you know, frequency. But people take it as all these rules telling us to do dumb stuff that doesn't even make sense. Who cares what kind of clothes I wear and what they're made yeah. out of? But it's on deeper than a physical level and what you look like. It's not even about what you look like or how you present. Yeah. It's about how your body is actually. It's receptive. Exactly. Because things be like, you know, when you touch something, it shock you. Yeah. Yeah. There's electricity. Mm -hmm. well, there's a current running through everything, mm -hmm. negative or positive. Mm -hmm. It's like, we are big batteries. Big uh, batteries. We are. Right. You know, it's like things are affecting us. Negative and positive all the time. That's great. We just don't think about it. When I found that out, I was just like, that's really wild. Right. Because I'd be seeing like for the little 100% cotton, yeah. 100% cotton. Like, I said, 100% um, cotton was like a good thing. Yeah. And I'm so pretty sure cotton really is. is. Yeah. yeah. But you know, mm -hmm. like in like certain cultures, they only wear silks. You feel me? Or like for certain occasions, they only wear like satins and silks. It's because of the charge. It's like, People should really wear linen, 100% linen. Oh, and some religious leaders do, and that's part of the basis behind it. Wow. Interesting, right? Yeah. Morning, no. I was deep. Right. It's deep. Right. Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, there you go. They don't want us to do stuff. It don't make no why? sense. Why? And I'm like, mm. I'm not going to lie. I didn't have my faults, but I also was just like, some of the stuff don't make sense. Like, you got to just keep. Like you said, the context. Exactly. Take that. You got to understand it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why when I got to that, I was like, wow, bro. Wow. All right. I don't, I don't care if it don't make sense right now or you feel me? It's like, it was for a reason. Sometimes we just don't have the context. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is. It's like, you got to know the teacher mm -hmm. where it's coming from. Right. And some people, with all things in life, we get taught something and we run with it. Even if we only taught part of it. It's like, if I only have half the truth, I don't know. And if I'm not receptive to getting the other half, I'll never have it. But it's like, we could argue wrong and right all the time. Mm -hmm. But what are you actually receptive to? Right. Oh. I feel like on Saturday mornings, how they'd be having like the educational programs, they'd be like, the morning out with the little star. <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the little EI in the corner. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, no. I'm glad we had this talk. Yeah. <laughs> Section. I just nerded it out on you a couple of times. Thank you for riding with me. Right. I was right there with you. I was oh, right there. Oh. Uh, I know you said you had to get out of here. We did go past 30 minutes. Probably did. You no, know, we definitely did. We definitely did. I stopped the camera and restarted it. So, But uh, thank you guys for checking in. Thank another you. episode. Sake Sundays. I think we got another shot in here. Uh-oh. All right. Thank you, Sake, for sponsoring the show.
God's favorite jewels for, you know, providing a little bling bling for us, you know. Go check it out. I'll link it below. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Follow me on all platforms. Underscore Denny doll. Bye. Spell it for him. Oh, D-E-N-N-I-D-O-L-L. So Denny doll. I heard it from the source. Peace. Bye. <laughs> Now I'll just take a screenshot of that for the... Oh, the okay. Oh, that's a video. Oh. Yeah, it's a video. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, act like you posed it for a picture. Man. Look at me. <laughs> I mean, it was like, we were having a conversation, we were about to take the shot. Right. Like, make it look fun for the cover. Like, right. Or we're like smiling, like we're kind of laughing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but all right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.